Welcome to Robot Wars Grand Champions. Last time we saw some major robotic destruction. Shunt with a gnarly hatchet job. And Morg thought they'd won it, but in an upset, Firestorm was the last to be disabled and went through to the semifinals. So let's see who's going to join him this week on Robot Wars. The best of the best are set to do battle, and only one will make it out alive. I'm your host, Joni, and this is Robot Wars Grand Champion. Tonight, one more robot will soar into the semifinals, while the others will see their dreams crushed on the arena floor, literally. The fighting's been furious, and we have named three semifinals so far. Who wants it the most? We're about to find out. Let's get down to the floor and get it on. And get it on we will, Joni. Here's how it lines up in Heat D. Iron Aw, Mortis, and Mazakari. But first up, Steg 2, Kronos, and Crusader 2. From Romsey, Siege number 7, Steg 2. And there it is, Steg 2, winning 176 pounds with a zero turn in circle. It's got a CO2 powered pneumatic flipper, but a limited tank size, so they better get their shots in. Oh, this is Steg 2. We're back for the wars this year because we got demolished last year by Hypnodisc in the grand final program. We come joint third, Firestorm, uh, with a totally new robot this year, bigger and better than last year. New, more powerful lifting tail, running at about 1,000 psi. She's faster, she's bigger, she's better, and hopefully she's going to go all the way. From Southampton, Kronos. And Kronos with a 12 airbag pneumatic system, two motors, also 176 pounds with a really hard aluminum shell. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is our robot Kronos, and this is the team captain Julian. Hi, uh, this is a different machine. Uh, he's a pneumatic crusher and flipper. Uh, difference with this, he runs on airbags to flip this big weapon over, so he flips at the back, crushes at the front. Armor piercing tip. Uh, it should make a nice few holes and probably squash a few robots. From Loughton in Essex, Crusader 2. Crusader 2 with that pneumatic lifting arm can lift its own weight and has two spikes attached to the ram. But it looks like their design influence came from a scanner. Right there with the Crusader 2 team. This is our robot. It's a six-wheeled, fully invertible robot. The middle wheels are slightly bigger than the ends so that we can get a very fast rate of spin. The drives are given by the, uh, a dual redundant chain drive, so if one chain snaps, another one takes over. We've got a high pressure air ram that can lift about 80 kilograms and has three controllable positions. Roboteers, stand by. There's Kronos with Julian and Mark Rappel at the controls. And Steg 2 with Rob Heisman, Dan King, and Peter Rowe. And last but not least, Crusader 2 with Richard Jessup, Reg Clayton, and Chris Williams. Two, one. And remember, only two can go through out of this round. And they're off. Crusader 2 right into Steg. Immediately pushing Steg back into the corner patrol zone. Where Dead Metal is waiting and ready to do some slicing and dicing. Whoa! Crusader is now up on Kronos! And Snag 2 with that pneumatic flipper gets himself out of certain disaster. Crusader 2 now bunching them all up a little bit of traffic here. Snag 2 backs up to get a little bit of a run at it. Snag 2 going after Kronos this time and flips Kronos completely over. That lifting flipper of Snag 2's got a lot of power. And there goes the pit of oblivion. If these bots know what's good for them, they're gonna stay out of that hole, that's for sure. But meanwhile, Kronos has got his own problems as Crusader backs it into the corner patrol zone, and Dead Meadow's gonna try to take some pieces out of him. And look at that saw go right through that plexiglass. Oh, forget it. They better get out of there quick. And now Stake 2 out of the fire into the frying pan. Now that CPZ, or corner patrol zone, means there's a house bot lurking nearby. And if they spend too much time in there, the house bot will tear them to shreds. 
And some shredding is getting done right now with Sir Killalot, the biggest of the house bots, taking it to Kronos. Well, Kronos is all over, which means the other two are gonna probably go through unless some miracle happens. No, no miracle in this round. So it's the pits for Kronos, and Snake 2 and Crusader 2 go through. Next up after the break, Mortis, Mazakari, and Iron Awe. Welcome back to Robot Wars Grand Champions. So far, we've seen Steg 2 and Crusader 2 take a licking and keep on ticking. Kronos getting flipped out. And Dead Metal and Kronos having a little dance, but the last dance went to Sir Kill a lot as Kronos did a little break dancing. So there it is, Stake 2, Crusader 2 go through to the next round, but right now it's Mortis, Masakari, and Iron Awe. From Downington, Mazakari. Mazakari in at 176 pounds. It's got three electric motors, a custom-built solid steel ring, and it's got a blade attached to the disc. Hi, I'm Richard. That's Phil and Phil. This is Mazakari, and we have a 70-centimeter disc with uh, very large blades on. We have uh, three-millimeter aluminium... Uh, check plating with uh, very large metal wheels that can also run upside down with a little wheel on top. From Nottingham and Cambridge, seed number 23, Mortis. Mortis looking like a stealth tank at 174 pounds, three electric motors, an axe, a lifting arm, capable of lifting 220 pounds. Hi, this is Team Mortis, back for War 4. This is Alpha Chilcott, this is Paul Paul, our new token blonde. <laughs> and this is Mortis, um, very similar to last year. We've reworked it, made it more reliable. Major difference is that we've coated the outside of the armor this time in silicon carbide, which is second and half as only to diamond and CBN, so effectively it's diamond coated. Um, a few improvements on the axe, hopefully it's going to work properly with this war. Lift as as before, um, but we'll see how it goes. From Loham in Somerset, Iron Ore. And the electrically powered 175 pound Iron Awe. It's got a huge axe as a really powerful weapon, but it's slower than molasses in January. Hello, I'm Gilbert. This is my son Robert. This is our robot Iron Ore. The main weapon is a very powerful axe, which uh, is powered by CO2 at 175 PSI, large bore cylinder, very powerful, chops through steel quite nicely. It's a track vehicle, uh, run from the Bosch 750 watt motors. Very useful piece of machinery. Roboteers, stand by. And there's Mortis with Rob Knight, Arthur Chilcott, and Paul Ford at the controls. And Mazakari with Phil Sievers, Phil Neely, and Richard Neely. And Iron Awe with the Brothers Grimm, Gilbert and Robert. Three, two, one. And there they go, the spinning wheel of Mazakari just uh, spinning its way over into the corner patrol zone, getting pushed over there by Mortis. Mortis is now on Iron Awe. Could be the battle of the axes, and we're not talking about air guitar. As Mazakari gets out of trouble from the CPZ, Mortis has got some speed, it's got power. Doesn't look like anybody's gonna give him any trouble as he flips over Mazakari, who can run either way. And now Iron Awe gets into the act. Iron Awe with that axe. Look at that again. Mortis right under Mazakari. Mazakari helpless, no traction whatsoever as Mortis pushes him and has his way with him. Pushes him right into Iron Awe, a little tag team action there. Now Mortis drags Mazakari into the corner patrol zone as Repcam shows up the close up carnage that Sir Killalot is about ready to do if they don't get out of the way. Well, the Mazakari boys are looking nervous up in the box. And even more helpless down in the arena as Mortis has got him hanging from his little limb there. 
Mortis drags Mazakari right into Shunt's capable Diamond Edge axe. As the pit opens, Sir Killalot's having a look at Iron Aw, who's just staying out of trouble. Mortis is doing all the damage in this round. But wait a second. It looks like the house bots have got another plan. Iron Aw's just sitting there, not taking anything into their own hands. As that Killalot cam shows you, Iron Aw's just a bit of cannon fodder right now. So who's it gonna be to join Mortis through into the next round there? Both looking weak, Iron Aw and Masakari. This one's gone right down, the count is out, it's up to the judges. And Masakari is toast, with Mortis and Iron Aw going through to the next round. Well, the action in the arena is definitely heating up. More head-to-head, -head, metal on metal to come. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Robot Wars Grand Champions. So far, if you've been with us, you would have seen Kronos getting flipped, flopped, and frappéed, and dumped. The second eliminator found Mortis dominating over Massacari, a bit of a massacre. And then Iron Aw squeaked through. So here's how it lines up in round two. Mortis versus Crusader 2. But first up, Stag 2 versus Iron Aw. Robotians, stand by. Well, Iron Aw is lucky to be even in this round. They just tried to stay out of trouble in that last Eliminator. And there's Steg 2. What an awesome design. And the Steg 2 boys look intensive. Three, two, one, activate. And they're off, not exactly off to a lightning fast start. Just sizing each other up, it looks like. Steg 2 has got all the beauty in the brawn, but will it do any good? And it does! Iron Hawk has completely flipped over, and that self-correcting arm brings him right back down onto his tracks. Look at that! Beautiful Iron Hawk gets flipped, but Steg 2 got a little air too as that arm lifted up. Well, there's enough CO2 pressure to put 220 pounds into the air. Iron Aw is just a little dizzy after that, missing the mark with that axe. Steg 2 with an amazing design, and there goes the pit. Iron Aw better stay away from it if it knows what's good, because I tell you, Steg 2 is looking dominating. Oh, Steg 2 in there with a little brush with disaster. Look at this replay. Steg 2's got so much power, just putting Iron Aw up in the air like a shoebox. Just to reveal their self-fulfilling prophecy, it ain't over till it's over. It could be all over. As the audience is banged for the pit, Iron Aw swinging at nothing. Shunt goes in with the axe, and oh! Steg 2 puts Matilda up on her side. Oh, she's not gonna like that. And the axe has just been cut off by Sir Killalot. Oh, Iron Aw's axe, let's look at that. Those pincers just came down on that axe like a piece of butter. Ah, oh, they've got no weapons left. They were lucky to be in there in the first place. The count is out, and the Steg 2 guys are elated. Iron Aw, history. Steg goes through. Next up, Mortis versus Crusader 2. Robotians, stand by. There's Mortis with a design that's the one to beat. And the Mortis boys up at the box. Rob Knight there. Crusader 2 didn't look too bad either. Had a lot of speed. Low to the ground. Zero Three, turning circle. Two, Let's see how one. these two match up. And they're off. Mortis off to a defensive start. Crusader 2 going heads up with that spike right underneath Mortis. It's the first time Mortis has had any trouble with anybody in this heat. Crusader 2 is relentless, taking a little bit more charge than anybody else has given up against Mortis. Crusader 2 is now having a little jump up on top of Mortis with that convenient wrap as Mortis swings away with that axe and gets a piece of Crusader 2. That axe went pretty deep into Crusader. It could be some real damage, but he gets out of it. Crusader gets out of it. Mortis is going right after him again and pushing Crusader into the ramp, almost in the corner patrol zone. Now Shunt's having to go with his axe. Oh, 
Poor Crusader needs a little more weaponry here. He's got the speed and he's got the agility, but no offensive weapons to speak of. As we look at Mortis ripping shreds off a Crusader 2. And shot now down with the axe. Poor Crusader 2 has been a chopping block this entire heat. As the house bots converge on Crusader 2 to add insult to injury. Dead Metal drops that blade. Crusader's got nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Crusader 2 is getting sliced up as the house bots have their way. And it looks as if Mortis isn't done yet either. Mortis is getting a couple last digs in there as Crusader 2 is all through. There it is, Crusader 2 is out of there, which means Mortis and Steg 2 will go through to the final of Eat D. Two more robots, one more battle, one more semifinalist. Next on Robot Wars, Grand Champion. Welcome back to Robot Wars Grand Champions. So far, we've seen Mortis earn its place in a well-deserved Heat D final by massacring Masakari and wiping out Crusader 2 with a little help from the house bots. Jordan Mortis will be Steg 2, who took on Kronos and then buried him. And then Steg 2 had a little go at Iron Aw. Iron Aw was getting flipped around, not doing any good with that axe, but always landing back on its tracks, but was off onto the wrong track when it hit the house spots. So there we have it, Steg 2 up against Mortis in Heat D's final. Roboteers, stand by. This is the one we've all Three, been waiting for, the two, two baddest bots one. in Heat D. There they go, they're off. And Mortis jumps right off to an early drive into the center. Steg 2 trying to align that lifting arm to put Mortis in some mortal danger. Steg 2 had a little bit of a go on Matilda in the last round, so you'll be looking for the house bots to get a bit of revenge on Steg 2 this time. As Mortis tries to push him into the corner patrol zone, Steg 2's not having any of it, though, and he's gonna back out of trouble at any chance. There he goes. Now, it's the first time they've gone head up, and that lifting arm's just missed by inches. If you have a look at that again, Steg 2's powerful lifting arm, if it got any contact, Mortis would have been out of the arena. But Mortis goes right underneath Steg 2 and has a little bit of a dominating thought himself as Steg 2 gets under the flames and continues to burn. Oh, he got out of there in time. Steg 2 backing up. It's not looking as lightning fast as he had in the earlier rounds as Mortis is trying to angle for some extra damage. Mortis is bringing that axe down. He's hooked up with a lifting arm and got away. Steg 2's out of it. Out of the clutches. Whoa! Steg 2 finally got a piece of Mortis with that lifted arm. Look at the power of that CO2 lifted arm. Put Mortis, who until now hadn't had any trouble with any other bot. Now they got trouble. Now this looks like a battle. And Mortis is stuck up on his side. He's got a self-correcting arm that should bring him over, but he's looking like he has a little trouble now. The Mortis team are looking a little paralyzed up there as their bot is looking paralyzed down in the arena. Who would have thought Steg 2 would have dominated so heavily? That lift and flipper seemed to make all the difference up against the Mortis crew as they take a little bank shot into the corner pocket. Mortis is history, which means Steg 2 stay at top of the scrap heap. And let's just take a look at how they got there. There was a bit of cat and mouse chasing going on at the beginning of that round as Mortis looked like they were going to do some real damage. And Steg 2 got in the flames. Mortis was just going to sit back and watch. But that axe didn't seem to do any good for him. 
The axe just clipped him for a minute. But Steg 2's awesome CO2 lifting arm made mincemeat of Mortis. Flipped him over on his back like a cockroach who couldn't get over. And then it was fire in the hole. And here's how the semi-finalists look so far. Chaos 2, Pussycat, Firestorm, and Steg 2. So Steg 2 takes on all comers and moves into the semi-finals, but this thing is far from over. We've got more robots who think they're tougher, meaner, stronger, and better than anything we've ever seen so far. They'll be battling for another spot in the semis next time right here on Robot Wars Grand Champions. Next time on Robot Wars, you'll see Major Tom, Disco Inferno, Shadow of Napalm, plus 101, Dominator, and Henry II. All that and more.